Okay, let's get powered up. Let's see. Now we have the uh, monitor set up on the desk. Let's get into it and see what see what happens. Since my other display was coming on first. Okay, logging into Windows. Oh, and we're straight in. We're straight into the screen. Okay, interesting. So I believe this has some toggle on the back. We have some options. Auto detection, okay, so input selection, system setup. So let's go through that. Okay, so English is fine. Power key lock, key lock, power settings. Mm, we want performance mode, I believe. Adjusting these values will adjust power consumption, yes. Uh, okay. Ah, okay, now it's opened up. Okay, so power saving mode basically locked down a lot of the functionality. Okay, so these are, so we're starting at the top, I guess. This is, uh, the AI assistant features. So we have AI crosshair, AI shadow boost, AI sniper, and then MOBA map helper. I don't play this style of games. In gaming, we have variable refresh rate on. It says it supports FreeSync Premium. This is probably because I've got it connected over HDMI at the moment and probably want to change it to DisplayPort then. Uh, okay, well, we'll come back to that. As I noticed, you couldn't have EM, uh, ELMB off, uh, but maybe if we toggle that off, does that actually change any feature? In the on screen menu, let's go back. No, it doesn't. So it could be the fact that ELMB is only available with. Uh, display point, uh, display port 1.4 and not HDMI 2.1, which is interesting. Uh, okay. Need to do some testing anyway. This is the first boot, uh, first switch on of the monitor. So obviously we want to see, uh, what options we do have. So we have game plus features, FPS counter, crosshair, sniper, Mm, what do these do? Uh, okay, you have this is this AI sniper where you have the zoom in option. Uh, displays practice mode in the top right corner, I believe, but it's kind of a cheating feature. I won't use any of these. I don't think that the, don't make much sense. Uh, I'll experiment and have a look, but uh, just for the purpose of testing, but it's not something I would use in play. I believe get good or keep trying. Stopwatch, mm, display alignment, okay. So, so various different features here. Game of visual, okay, so you've got different mode. Okay, so it defaults to racing mode, that's interesting. So you have different different picture modes. Okay, scenery mode, wow, that's quite a difference in the color temperature. Racing mode is default, okay, cinema mode. Uh, RTS RPG mode. FPS mode, okay, that really brightens. You can see the brightness boost there. You know, that's to help uh, spot enemies in uh, darker areas and bring out shadow detail. Uh, there's an sRGB mode. Okay, that, that definitely reduces the nit's brightness. Then you have the MOBA uh, mode, night vision. Uh, my vision is this weird green. I, I have no idea why you would want to use that. It doesn't make any sense. And then a user mode. Okay. So I think we'll we'll just, uh, I don't know what the default mode is to use really best. Let's just put it back into racing mode for now. Uh, you have the AI shadow boost, which should automatically detect the type of content you've got on screen and adjust it accordingly. Or you've got manual different levels. Three, two, and one, and then off. I think it was off by default. Then you have the widget center. We already have this downloaded. Uh, this is an application. 
uh, that lets you control all of the functionality that you'd have in the on-screen on display uh, from the actual desktop. Okay, so you've got brightness adjustment. So this is on 65 at the moment. Actually, it looks pretty bright as well. I would say that's, that's, that's pretty decent brightness for that level. Uh, I think the LG I tested earlier, previously, you had 90 or 100 to get this kind of brightness, it felt. And that was even one of the new panels released uh, for 2024. So there's a reason I didn't didn't decide to go with that one. In the end, uh, oh, I don't want to adjust the brightness. Let's go back. Uh, uniform brightness. So basically what this does is uh, when you have full screen right window, sorry, it's gone into screensaver mode because there's no mouse movement. Basically what uni uh, uniform brightness does is when you would uh, resize a full white window or when you would resize a white window the bigger the larger it got it would uh, automatic brightness limiter would kick in and reduce the overall screen brightness which can be distracting so what uniform brightness does is it automatically lowers the panel brightness to avoid the uh, abl kicking in uh yeah you can see uh, if we switch it on it does actually decrease the overall brightness quite a bit uh, we'll leave that on for now. I want. I need to do some testing. Contrast defaults at 80. So brightness is a 65 default. Contrast at 80. Uh, these anti-flicker features are not available at the moment. Uh, I'm curious. This is possibly because of one of the modes I'm in. Anyway, we've got blue light filter as well. So you can have various different adjustments to the blue light. Uh, some of them are quite dramatic. Level 4 obviously makes a massive difference. Vivid pixel. No idea what that does. I guess that's some kind of sharpness. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that now. So what else do we have? Okay, so in image we don't... So the things we don't have access to at the moment are OLED anti-flicker, which is a VRR feature, I believe. Yeah, I can't even select it. Uh, HDR settings, because we're not in HDR mode in Windows or in any game, and an aspect control. Uh, then we've got color display. Okay, so it's set to wide gamut. You have sRGB, DCI-P3, and then wide gamut. Color temperatures, you can set the color temperatures. Uh, I think it must be set by user at the moment and the user profile because there is no, uh, it doesn't look like any of these settings are selected. Saturation, okay, you can adjust that. Uh, then you have more advanced uh, saturation for the color levels. And then you have the gamma, so yeah, 2.2 .2 is normally the default, okay. Then you have OLED care, so you've got some various different features. Uh, I think uh, new to 2024 ASUS range is uh, OLED Care Plus, so this brings some new features. Uh, I think traditional ones are Screen Saver, the Pixel Cleaning, Pixel Cleaning Reminder. I think these have all been seen on previous uh, generation monitors and also from other manufacturers. Screen Move also is uh, common. So I think Auto Logo Brightness might be new for this one. Taskbar Detection is definitely new as I understand. Uh, outer Local Dimming Control is new. Local dimming control, I think, might be new as well. I'm not sure. Uh, then you have OLED usage info. So we've got track time. Uh, it says two hours, so I imagine that they actually do some initial testing in the factory. Uh, or it's the minimum time that it tracks. And then pixel clean times one. So when it first switches on... Uh, and then we, we again, I think, cycle through the same controls. So I think uh, all of these are actually, all these are, all these features are, are set to on at the moment. So input selection, so we've got auto detection, we've got HDMI. Yeah, so we're connected by HDMI at the moment. So lighting sync is on. Uh, it is on, yes, yeah, okay. So then we have this. Aura RGB, I have an ASUS board, so I think, uh, I don't know if this can be controlled through Armory Crate or not. This is something I will have to look at, because at the moment you've just got predefined modes. Lights in motion, uh, yeah, again, need to experiment with what these are, but... 
I don't even know what that does at the moment. Uh, okay, so that's that light there. It was on level two. Ah, okay, this is, ah, okay, so you can do the sink. Basically, the sink should then do uh, whatever your uh, Armoury Crate software for select. I don't think you can change the color. I think it's all defaulted to red anyway, so uh, interesting to see what that does. Then you have some favorites, so you can actually make some shortcuts uh, for different features, and there's some customized settings as well. Then we've got system setup. So, okay, so English, yeah, language. If headphone out, we're not gonna have that on because we're using an external DAC, so I would just mute that anyway. USB setup, uh, okay. On during standby, after, okay, so USB hub, okay. Windows has gone into standby again. Uh, power indicator, that's on. I guess that's the, uh, the front logo, okay. Key lock, yeah, we went through that power settings, so we're in performance mode at the moment. Uh, then we have on screen display setup timeout transparency, uh, display port stream, uh, DSC support, so it's on. Information, okay, so we have the information, so there we go, the model name. Uh, we're on firmware version MCM 101. Uh, Okay, so we don't have any. Okay, so that's all you see there. Uh, and then you have an option to reset everything. Which I don't think we need to do. Uh, and, uh, and that's about it for now. Um, I'm curious about this ELMB support because I really want to test that out. Uh, but obviously it's not there. And I think actually looking at NVIDIA specification sheet, uh, they do mention that the, uh, the certification for G-Sync with this monitor as well has only been done over, H, uh, over a display port. So um, we'll come back to that. Uh, but this is a first quick look. Uh, I'll go back into uh, some more details shortly okay i figured out how to enable the uh black frame insertion mode e l m b basically what you need to do is you need to set the refresh rate at either 240 or 120 then the mode becomes enabled so for example if we go back and uh change to the maximum refresh rate of 480 we'll see the screen uh, momentarily go off and change and we'll say we want to accept but then we will go into gaming and we can see okay it's it's grayed out so basically you have to have a refresh rate that's in the supported range which uh, anything below 240 I believe so when we actually select 240, we accept. Now, if we go into the on-screen menu, we have the, enable, the mode enabled, so we can toggle that on. The brightness does go down a little bit, but now we actually have that mode enabled, so this is uh, clearly then visible in the on-screen display. So there, glad I figured that out. You obviously have to uh, disable variable refresh rate, I believe. You can't have that on at the same time. Let's just check to confirm. Yeah, it says in the menu that that feature will be disabled. So you do have to disable uh, G-Sync VRR to allow it to run. Uh, and then we can go back in and we can enable it. Yeah, perfect. All right, so a little quick update. I'll do some more testing and be back with more videos. Thanks.